You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. All right, Black and White Sports supporters. Well, I always like to cover these stadium situations because, well, they can get pretty ugly and pretty nasty. And I don't know if you guys realize this, but the Chiefs and Arrowhead, they got a vote going today. In fact, up there as to whether or not they're going to extend the sales tax or if the Hunts are going to be put in a position that they're going to get their their bluff called on whether or not they would actually move the Chiefs out of Kansas City. Now, a lot of times that just means we're going to move them 20 minutes away, but still, you get the point. Well, we got another situation that's looming, and this time it's a team we cover a lot, the Browns. And we got a a city councilman that has fired a shot directly at Jimmy Haslam. Now, I'm sure if you guys follow this channel enough, you've seen enough Deshaun Watson videos to realize I'm not the biggest Jimmy Haslam guy in the world. I'm not. I I think he's the reason that an immensely popular Alex Van Pelt, including by Kevin Stefanski, who was a big fan and did not want to fire the guy, It would bother me if I was a coach and I had to get rid of a guy that I firmly believe helped my staff. That's not cool, but Haslam wanted him out, or at least that's the word on the NFL streets. Well, you gave Deshaun $230 million fully guaranteed. You can't be a very good NFL owner if you do that under the circumstances of everything. Anyway, let's take a look at this. We got a uh, Cleveland councilman that put the Browns on notice about the Art Modell law amid stadium negotiations. I don't blame them for creating this law after what happened to the Browns before. A member of the Cleveland City Council is putting Browns owner Jimmy and D. Haslam on notice about the Art Modell law amid discussions about the team possibly moving outside of the city. On Monday, Councilman Brian Casey held a press conference that may help put the brakes on the Browns' recently publicized plans to potentially move the stadium to Brook Park. During the press conference, Casey cited a state law passed after former Cleveland Browns owner Art Modell moved the team to Baltimore in 1996. In case you're wondering, yeah, that's the Ravens, which throws up roadblocks for team owners who intend to move out of their home city. Casey said Monday he plans to introduce city legislation that would direct the Cleveland law director to enforce Section 9.67 of the Ohio Revised Code. The so-called, quote, Art Modell Law blocks professional sports teams that receive taxpayer support from playing most of their home games at a place other than their home stadium unless either one of the two things of these two things happen. One, the mayor and city council willingly sign off on the move. Or two, the team provides six months notice that they intend to move and then gives the city or people who reside in the area a chance to buy the team. That's interesting. Quote, what this does is ensure the Cleveland Browns have to go through the legal process to move the team, whether it's to Timbuktu or Brook Park, Casey said in a news conference. If they pursue the Brook Park option, the Haslams may find themselves on the opposite side of the Art Modell law than they were several years ago when the law and the Haslams were credited with keeping the Columbus crew in Ohio following the professional team's once-proposed move to Texas. Cleveland.com previously reported the Columbus crew situation was the only time the Art Modell law has ever been invoked. Then Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine filed a lawsuit in 2018 in an attempt to enforce it. That case was eventually settled when the Haslam stepped in with other investors to purchase the crew. But during that court case, Pre-Court Sports Ventures, LLC, 
tried to argue the law is unconstitutional. Interesting. They asked a Franklin County judge to dismiss the case, but he denied the request, saying the defendants had not successfully argued the law was unconstitutional. And, of course, you got a bunch of people lining their pockets because, well, politics. Though Casey was the only council member to speak during Monday's press conference, several other members, including President Blaine Griffin, Mike Pol- Polensick, Chris Harsh, Kevin Conwell, Joseph Jones, and Kevin Bishop were also present. Casey's legislation would provide an opportunity for city council to publicly ask the Browns questions about their stadium plans. Interesting. During the committee's hearings, it's common to hear from experts or stakeholders about their take on proposed legislation. With the Browns' lease on the city-owned stadium ending in 2028, the Haslam's have increased leverage to seek publicly funded repairs or upgrades to the existing stadium on Cleveland's downtown lakefront. But the Haslam's are now floating two potential ideas for future stadium. Renovate the current facility in Cleveland, like they're talking about doing with Arrowhead, or build a new one in Brook Park. They have pegged the price tag for renovations at $1 billion, or it would cost $2 billion to build a new dome stadium in Brook Park. By the way, something your quarterback, Deshaun Watson, wants him to do. He came out and publicly, publicly acknowledged the other day he wants to play in a dome which is odd because you decided to go to Cleveland and you knew they didn't have a dome. Not only that, but it feels like one of the best home field advantages in the league with those fans outdoors in the elements. You know, the dog pound? Nah. Anyway, if the tactic sounds familiar to longtime Browns fans, it's because it is. In the early 70s when the lease negotiations were unfolding, Modell purchased 190 acres of land in Strongsville and talked publicly about moving the stadium out of the city limits. While Modell initially chose to stay in Cleveland, he eventually moved the team to Baltimore in 1996. And they go on to talk about the fact that Brown Stadium right now is, as you can imagine, it's an economic driving force around there, like a lot of these NFL stadiums are with jobs and and programs and things of that nature that just contribute to the community. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, hotels, everybody's got to work at all these places, you know, and that does contribute and create jobs and things of that nature. That's interesting because, um, you know, the Bears have purchased land in Arlington Heights in Illinois, and there's been some talk of using that as leverage against against so, Soldier Field and trying to get renovations done there and things of that nature. So I don't know how this is going to play out. Like I said, the crap's coming to a head right now with Arrowhead and the Chiefs. The Browns look like they're quickly becoming next. And the Haslam's are interested or may or may not be purchasing land. Maybe they already have. I don't know in a different location, that Brook Park location, and that's as leverage for the idea that, hey, like the Hunts did with Chiefs fans, we're going to threaten the move, blah, 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 if you don't do this, and you can see we've already got a place to take it to. I don't know. It's, it's really interesting, but it seems like these fans – in Cleveland, which I've been very vocal, seem like fantastic fans. I mean, that their response to the Browns last year, Joe Flacco and that entire situation, that was just fun. I mean, their reaction was great. And just the energy of watching one of those games was just off the charts, you know. Uh, so they seem like a great fan base. They always have. Sorry you're not called the Indians anymore. As a baseball fan, that drives me nuts. Bring back the Redskins, too. Anyway, you get my point. Uh, So now we got more politicians involved. What will the the Haslam's do? I wouldn't trust them as far as I could throw them. Yikes. 
go out there and sign another quarterback. Maybe with any luck, Russell Wilson will be available soon. Then you can have Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson on the same roster. Maybe you can trade for him, make it an even bigger wreck. I kid because, good Lord, it's nuts. It really is, folks. I, I, I think the Watson thing is the worst move in the history of the NFL, and you guys know that. So tell me what you think. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.